everybody, my name is Brooke and you're at the Pink Frog. Today I'm going to do an Easter lookbook. Join me, won't you? Has anybody got a carrot around here? I'm just kind of hungry for one right now. Anybody? Hi everybody and welcome. Today I'm going to be doing an Easter lookbook for you guys. I'm going to start off and get right into it. So, Today I'm wearing a another ice cream dress, which I really enjoy and I love. And I'm just gonna stand up real quick so you can take a peek. See, the fabric is really super cute. It has little ice creams all over it in all different colors and different arrays of colors. And it's done in um, like the pajama fabric almost. It's um, kind of like flannel. And then up at the sweater, this is the sweater that I made that goes with it. It's got little flowers on it all along here and then I have on this side little cupcake banners little cupcakes holding up banners kind of cute as you can see and then I have a pink polka dotted trim on it and little crystalline buttons and I'm just gonna stand up on my chair give you guys a twirl of the whole skirt parachute down and yeah, I really enjoy this. I um, am inspired by the day. Today is just absolutely gorgeous outside. Beautiful weather and it makes me think of ice cream. And a little later on, I'm gonna have my favorite ice cream which is gonna be chocolate chip mint with chocolate fudge sauce on it. But it has to be green chocolate chip mint. It can't be the white chocolate chip mint because it just doesn't have the same flavor. So on to my next look, I'll be right back. So my next look is the um, overalls pattern by McCall's. It's the M7547. And it's that, it's this one. Very cute. And I fell in love with this pattern. I had a, a kind of a hard time with this, not kind of a hard time, but a very hard time. I had to put the pattern down and walk away from it for a couple of days because I started getting really agitated. I had way too much coffee or tea when I was doing this. so. Um, I came back to it and now that I've mastered it, I'm really happy. So let me show you what it looks like. I love it. The fabric that, this is coming off rather uh, like darker than I thought it would. It's a, it's a corally pink and it's a Waverly fabric. So I just, and this is the pocket in the front. You get this big old pocket up here. And then I'm gonna stand up, ow, that was my foot. And this is, and you have a little zipper here at the side. Now on theirs, on their on the pattern they have it was another that was one of the things that irritated me was that I'm just going to turn around I didn't do the pockets on the back side either you have two pockets here but I chose not to do that either I really was excited about doing this pattern and I thought it was going to be supersonically simple and um, it turned out to be not supersonically simple but after I learned how to do it, I was like, oh my gosh, I can do this in so many different arrays of colors of fabric that it's going to be super fun now. Um, uh, la, la, la. Back to the point in hand. I put a zipper on the side right here, and the pattern calls for a button to go here. And I, there really wasn't any point to that for me. I didn't need a button on it, so I didn't do the button. I just went ahead and I was like, forget this. I also didn't line, when you cut the strip for the, the middle piece, this piece, you cut out two strips of fabric and you line the inside of it with it, and they do it a, a funky way in the directions that I really wasn't patient enough to deal with. So I just did it and I didn't put any lining on it. I was like, it's, it was just a step that I was like, okay, it's not necessary for me at least. It might be for somebody else who's done this. The only thing that I would change on this pattern is the fact that the straps, those I would line because um, if I want to wear this, you're going to notice a theme here in a minute. When I want to wear these down, let's say, you know, kind of like, like let's say I want to have this hanging out because there's an ice cream under here. <laughs> I have an ice cream hanging out. So if I wanna, if I wanna like hang these out, you know, like that, and I bring my straps out, they're not lined. So I kinda, I kind of wanna, I would want to line the straps so that they, they don't show um, just white underneath them. That would be the only thing that I would wanna change. Um, malfunction, ah, I don't know where my other strap went. Um, 
Okay, wait. Whoops. Whoops there. This is the strip for this side. That's where it is. Sorry about this, folks. Just a minute. Look away. I still can't find the other strap. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Okay. There we go. While I'm fixing myself up, contemplate the egg corn. It's nor an egg or a corn. Go figure. Okay. So that is um, my second look. I really like doing the McCall's pattern. I think it's really great because you can do pants in it. You can do um, like the little jumper. I, get, I think that's a jumper or a skirt with it, which is really cool. The fabric I used was Waverly. It was from Walmart. So I paid what? I don't even think I paid $4 a yard for this fabric, which is a really, I mean, this fabric is just, I love it. It's so cute. The only thing that I would suggest is if you use a Waverly fabric like I have, Waverly is a an upholstery fabric. So the weft and waft threads on this are really, really wide. So if you puncture it and you're not careful, you will you can, like when you put the zipper in or when you're doing seams, it can run, like a run in your stocking. And um, which is really kind of strange to me because Waverly fabrics are an upholstery fabric. If I did a couch in this and I went and sat on the couch and the seams have to take a lot of stress, the seams would stretch and they rip and they just, it's just like you would in your hose. It just rips a seam right in there. So that part I was a little confounded about. I was like, okay, I'm just going to get past this. And then I went out and bought more fabric that was Waverly. So apparently I have an, enough belief in the fact that I won't split my seams. I hope. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to go on to my next look and I'll be right back. Thank you. Okay, so for my next look, I did the Cynthia Rowley pattern, this one. And this is 808. Six. And I wanted to do a little outfit for Frisbee golf because I love to play Frisbee golf, disc golf, or froth as some people call it. And um, you need to be, well, you don't need to, but where I go afterwards, I like to go and have some lunch and I like to look somewhat nice. And um, after you are done playing Frisbee golf, you can just either you can wear this Frisbee golfing, which um, might get a little dirty, but, or you can wear it over clothing. So I'm just going to show you really quickly. This is my 1970s pattern fabric that I <laughs> love. As you can see, it is definitely the 70s. -da 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 -da. And then I put, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, that put a little button in the back right here. And this is just, I didn't make the dress. There's a dress. So there's a dress that's normally attached to the skirt, but I didn't make the dress. I made the skirt and I made the shell. So here, let me just jump up real quick so you can see the skirt. There's the skirt. I'm just gonna turn around. And then underneath, look out, I have shorts. So um, I can throw without the fear of somebody seeing my under my undergarments and then on this oh let me just show you really quickly I have on a tank top underneath so if I get too hot or anything or I am throwing and I get dirt on this I can just pop this on and over my tank top I just wanted to sorry there was somebody in my driveway um, so let me just show you really quickly because I can't say enough about Frisbee golf, golf, froth. If you YouTube it, there are people out there that are absolutely amazing at this sport. I'm not. I've got a really good short game. But this is my Frisbee golf bag. Right here. And these are all my little discs inside. They are very dirty. And just real quick, you have a putter just like you normally would. When you play regular golf, you have a putter for um, putting to get into the basket. This is a heavier, this is a heavier, um, uh, a heavier uh, disc than um, the other discs because it's for short, it's for throwing short. Then you have a distance driver, a long distance driver, which this one is. And actually, I helped somebody out on the field. Um, uh, find his golf is uh, his uh, disc. God, I can't speak. What the heck? 
went and found his disc, so he gave me this one, which I thought was really sweet. Now, that's the other thing that's really kind of cool is that when you're out playing Frisbee golf, people help each other. You play through just like you normally would. And when somebody loses a disc, I can't tell you how many times I've lost a disc. Guys come running, and they're like, hey, did you lose a disc? Let's all look together, and everybody will help you out, which is really super cool. Um, this is my favorite. This is my Valkyrie. I throw with this one the most, and you can see it's been used a lot. And it's... Um, one thing that's kind of cool, if I can show you, there's a hole right there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Okay, so I threw this in the woods and a thorn actually penetrated this. That's what that hole is from. This is hard plastic, okay? This is not, people have died from Frisbee golf discs hitting them in the head. That's a God's not, that's the truth. So it's really hard. So when you're throwing, for me to throw that hard that a thorn actually penetrated and went all the way through and I had to pick this out, that's pretty serious throwing. Um, but you have all different types of weights and short, you have a, a long driver, you have a long distance driver, you have a sidewinder, you have all different kinds of um, weights on these. It's more different styles of throwing. Anyway, um, it makes a lot of fun to go out on a date. If you're dating somebody, you're meeting somebody for the first time, going out and playing frisbee golf is a lot of fun. You play out in the woods, you play in parks, you play by rivers. It's beautiful. By me, there is a place called Fairfield. Absolutely gorgeous. If you're in the Illinois area, you want to play a beautiful course, go to the Fairfield course. Absolutely gorgeous. You play in an open field, then you play by the river, you play up by the woods absolutely stunning okay so um getting back to business this was an easy pattern to make i trimmed the sleeves on this and i trimmed the collar with bias binding and i just left the back open like that because when you throw with the disc just to kind of show you you have to really you have to set up and you throw across your body so if i'm doing that and my foot goes up i want to make sure that i'm covered in the back that's hence the shorts so um, the pattern for this is really good for that because the skirt is really full and it's really, it, you've got a lot of room here to play around in. You're not restricted at all and you don't, you can't be restricted when you play Frisbee golf. So the Cynthia Rowley pattern, I absolutely love. I think it's great. I don't think I'll ever make the dress, but for a Frisbee golf disc skirt, it is terrific. And the open back, I can make this an array of colors. Um, and it's very open and then I can go out for lunch with it. So it's a great thing to have. So I really like it. Okay, on to the next thing. Hold on one sec, thank you. Okay, so um, one of the looks that I presented in my last haul was this classic 1940s um, top, which is, uh, it is Simplicity 1590. And the one that I liked was this one. So, I made this. Da, 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 da. I love this top. Now I tie. It's supposed to be tied in the back. I tie it in the front because I have a little bit of a tummy issue, which is fine by me. I'm just gonna turn around. I'm gonna step up. I've got my little red shorts on with this because I didn't have anything else to wear with it for right now. Um, I love this top. This top is so cute. Um, I had no problems with it. I love the buttons. Get the buttons. I suck with buttonholes, but the little stripey buttons are really super cute. Ah! And I love the little bow tie. The only thing that I have a problem with is the collar. I put in really light weight because it calls for lightweight, um, lightweight, uh, lightweight interfacing. I think I would use um, some heavier duty interfacing because this is so lightweight that it just the collar just keeps either popping up or it doesn't stay nicely so into that little V but I really love this I think this is so cute I just it's a kimono style sleeve it's really super comfortable like I said you can tie it from the back I did mine around twice so, and I just tied it around to the back from the front because the, if you tie it around the back, it just totally stretches at your tummy and that's where I have issues. So that was my, I love this pattern though. Anybody can do this pattern. It's super easy. It's not hard at all. And it's a lot of fun and it's a retro 1940s. Um, I would definitely make this again. I really would. I think it's super cute. And for some odd reason, I think that a top like this would look cute with 
my dungarees, my little overalls. I don't know why, but I think that I could get away, not, not this cherry pattern with the other banner I have, but like denim or whatever I think would look. If I had a denim pair, I think it would look really super cute with this little top and everything. So I think that would be really adorable. And I really like it and I highly recommend it. I really think it's a great pattern. Thumbs up on that. Okay, another look. Hold on one second, I'll be right back. So for my last and final look, I have my Easter bleh, Easter day look that I made. Um, the top I didn't make and the jacket I didn't make, but the skirt I did make. I'm just going to step back. So this is the jacket, and I don't have any idea where I got this jacket from. This is the top that I got from Forever 21. And then... The skirt was inspired by Grace Kelly into Catch a Thief. So this is the skirt. Swirl. And it's a full skirt and it's really diaphanous. And it has a little bow tie right there which needs to be pressed. And I love this skirt. I'm just over the moon over this skirt and I just it was so perfect for Easter. We had such nice weather. It was just a perfect day, and I really enjoyed making it. This skirt has no pattern to it because it's a skirt I drafted. It's just your basic circle skirt, and I made the uh, circle skirt with just like a regular cotton underneath, just a regular old cotton. But this is the fabric, the outer fabric that I saw that's got the velvet, I don't know if you call it a velvet burnout, of butterflies all over it. It wrinkles kind of um, quickly, which is one of the downfalls. But I just made a simple cir circle skirt and I put a zipper in it and I lined the whole base with a bias, not a bias, but with a blanket binding. And it was real simple and real easy. And uh, I think in my seamstress tag, I don't know that I covered the fact that I got most of my inspiration for um, making clothing from film. All the old black and white films, they're just absolutely beautiful. And the clothes that were Edith Head and all of the Hollywood glamour, it was just absolutely gorgeous. Um, Givenchy and uh, Tiffany's and just all the outfits and all the clothes that everybody wore back then. Grace Kelly, um, Ginger Rogers, all of them. Just nameless, countless tons of people that were in Hollywood that made Hollywood what it was back in the day and they don't make clothes like that anymore so that's pretty much where that started from so that is my Easter lookbook I hope you enjoyed it and I will be coming up with my Easter haul um, shortly after this and I hope you have a beautiful day and I thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you had a very happy Easter or a very happy Easter as the case may be have a great day bye bye now